Hello farmers, welcome to another episode of bestfarmingtips.com. Today we are talking about how to grow beans, beans farming guide for beginners from planting to harvest. Learning how to grow green beans or dry beans from seed is not hard. Just a few simple steps and you'll be eating fresh green beans in no time. There are several varieties of green beans or dry beans that can be grown on the homestead or in the backyard vegetable garden. The dry bean is an important field crop because of its high protein content and dietary benefits. Fortunately, it's not necessary to start seeds indoors when you grow green beans or dry beans. They prefer to be planted directly into garden soil since they don't transplant well, although soaking the beans first for 24 hours will help speed up germination by 2 to 3 days. All beans can be grouped into one of two categories depending on how they grow. Beans can be eaten in the young green pod stage called snap beans or in the mature dry stage called dry beans. These terms can be used to describe any variety or species of bean. The first type of green bean is a bush bean. Bush beans are shorter beans that only grow to be about 2 feet or 60 centimeters in height. However, they don't require any trellises because if planted correctly, they basically stretch out and lean on one another for support. Also, bush beans have many popular varieties such as sugar beans, which are closely related to pinto beans, contender, blue lake, provider, and tender green. The second type of bean is ball beans. Now, these beans grow to be about 8 to 10 feet, that is 2.4 meters to 3 meters in height. Even so, these beans certainly need a trellis because of how tall they grow. However, most people grow these beans on teepees. They are obviously going to be much easier to harvest because they grow so tall and they are also great producers as well. The varieties of these beans available are butter beans, rattlesnake, fortex, and Kentucky Wanda. There are several other species of beans including runner beans, lima beans, cowpeas, and soybeans. The bottom line is what you are going to learn in this tutorial is going to work on any type of beans that you are going to grow. Although varieties and species are different, the growing concept remains the same across the bean farming world. In this tutorial, you will learn how to do land preparation before planting the beans, how to sow bean seeds, whether to use previously harvested beans or buy new seeds from the store how to fertilize the beans using compost or animal manure, or how much synthetic fertilizer to use if you don't have organic manure, how to irrigate your bean plants, when to harvest, and diseases and pests to watch out for. Before we get into detail, please kindly like this video and subscribe to Best Farming Tips channel so that whenever I upload a new educative video like this one, you get notified. Beans grow best in full sun, planted in well-drained and warm soil. Prepare soil ahead of time. When planting, use animal manure or aged compost, and this should be all the fertilizer you need if you have healthy soil. A clever technique to boost growth is to create a compost trench. Dig out a trench or holes about a foot or 30 centimeters deep where your beans are to grow. Fill the walls up with animal manure. Personally, I use chicken manure when growing beans. If you use this technique, your beans will thrive, as you will see in this tutorial. Where animal manure is not available, synthetic fertilizers can be used. But personally, I don't use store fertilizers at all at my homestead. Whatever I grow, I always use chicken manure, duck manure, or rabbit droppings. However, Pig manure, goat manure, or even compost will also help you get a good harvest, even if you decide to do away with synthetic fertilizers. Beans produce nitrogen, so it is important not to use too much fertilizer. Sugar beans or pito beans should be planted in well-drained soil as they are sensitive to acid soils. 
Bean growers are advised to plant fresh seed from farmers' markets, although dry seed is fine, provided it is not too old. If you are going to use synthetic fertilizers, then apply the fertilizer accordingly at a rate of 250 kgs per hectare of compound D fertilizer, drilled in with the planter or broadcast with a Vicon before the final disking, before planting your dry beans or sugar beans. About a month after sowing the seeds, apply calcium sulfate or gypsum at a rate of 250 kgs per hectare as top dressing just prior to flowering as this will help with pod set. If a previous crop's residue has been ploughed or disked in, then extra nitrogen will be needed to help with the composting or breaking down of the material. If you are going to use organic manure, then you don't need any synthetic fertilizers throughout the season. Beans will do best with a soil pH of 5.5 to 5.8. Beans are very sensitive to acidic soils. If the pH is not at these levels, then apply lime as per soil sample recommendations. Soil temperatures need to be at least 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 15.5 to 21.1 degrees Celsius. If not, germination will be slower. Another way to speed germination of seeds is to wait until soil is at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21.1 degrees Celsius. Green beans and dry beans are not frost tolerant, so they need to be planted after threat of frost has passed. As this is an international tutorial, I will not mention the specific months to plant beans since they vary from one country to another, depending on when they have their winter. However, the bottom line is, plant your beans anytime between 14 to 28 days before the last frost date and 80 to 133 days before the first frost date. Sow beans where they are to grow against their supports if you are growing pole beans. Bush beans varieties do not need supporting. The spacing to work with when sowing your bean seeds is 4 to 6 inches apart, that is 10 to 15 centimeters apart, with 18 inches or 45 centimeters spacing between rows. Bush beans should be planted in linear rows to support each other. Use a wall to scratch out rows or dig individual planting holes with a trowel. Drop in 2 to 3 seeds per wall and these 2 to 3 seeds should fall about 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters apart and are 1 to 2 inches, that is 2.5 to 5 centimeters deep within the same wall. You can build bamboo trellises for pole beans before planting the seeds. If your home is barricaded with fence, you can plant your pole beans or butter beans next to the fence so that you use the fence as a trellising system for the beans. Garden spacing is the same whether growing for seed or to eat. Growing pole beans gives you the advantage of maximizing your space and the beans grow straighter and are easier to pick. Bush type bean plants need no support, require little care and can be picked whenever you are ready to cook or freeze them. They typically produce an earlier crop too, so successive planting may be necessary for a continual harvest. Water in the morning so the plants can dry rapidly and avoid fungal disease. Water moderately to half an inch of water per week, which is about 13 millimeters per week, and avoid watering the plant tops. Beans require a minimum of 400 to 500 millimeters rainfall during its growing season, but totals of 600 to 650 millimeters is considered ideal. Irrigation is also required where the crop is growing before or after the rainy season. However, the best time to grow beans is just before the rains have started. In most African countries, they plant beans and maize or corn together, so that when it rains, the maize helps protect bean flowers from being destroyed by heavy raindrops. The critical growth stage requiring rainfall or irrigation is during flowering and pod set. Irrigation should stop when roughly 25% of the bean pods have turned yellow. When flowering starts, 
That is the time to apply top dressing fertilizer, calcium sulfate or gypsum at a rate of 250 kg per hectare. If you use animal manure or compost or any other organic manure, then you don't need to apply top dressing at this stage. But if you add extra manure to your beans, you would have done extremely well and they will reward you with more flowers and a subsequent better harvest. Continue watering your beans two to three times a week. The maximum temperature during the flowering period should not exceed 30 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit, as high temperatures will cause flower drop and thus low pod set, resulting in depressed yields. Any weeds that do pick through should be removed by hand to avoid disturbing the bean plant's roots. Give the weeds to your ducks or backyard chickens. Weeds and garden waste are ducks' favorite food. Beans can be harvested in the snap or green stage, the shelling stage, or the dry stage. Snap or green beans are ready for harvest when the pods are still tender, before the seeds start to swell. Shelling beans are ready for harvest after the pod has changed the color and the beans have plumbed, but before the pods and seeds have dried. Dry beans are ready for harvest when the pods are dry and brittle and the seeds inside are hard. Beans can be stored dry for months or years. They last in the refrigerator for about a week. Common problems beans farmers face include Binwi Ifo, Stem Nematodes, Downry Mildew, Leaf and Pod Spot, Chocolate Spot, Black Bean Aphid, Bean Seed Beetle, Bean Rust, Sclerotinia, Cutworms, White Mold, and mosaic viruses. Most fungal diseases can be prevented or treated if spotted early by simply applying neem oil or copper oxychloride. Apply once in two weeks or when necessary. For cutworms, white grubs that eat your beans roots and other pests, apply lambda twice a month or when necessary. Common beans can be affected by a number of diseases. Some of these diseases can remain in the soil for several years, so grow your beans in different areas of the garden each year. To prevent the spread of fungal and bacterial diseases among plants, avoid working in your bean patch when the foliage is wet. The best way to get rid of beetles and bugs that might eat the leaves of your plants is to pick them off and toss them into a jar of soapy water. If you see a white film on the leaves, pull them off and throw them away. Dilute one part powdered milk in nine parts water and spray plants once a week. This neutralizes the infection at the early stages and prevents further infestation. Diseases such as rust, angular leaf spots, anthracnose, and viral diseases should be kept under check with fungicides such as neem oil and copper oxychloride or mancozem. The farmer should constantly check for pests such as beanfly maggots, aphids, thrips, and bollworms. Towards the end of the season, it's worth leaving a few pods of open pollinated or heirloom varieties to dry out on the plant. Shell the dry pods, then bring the beans inside to dry further in an airy location. Store the beans in paper envelopes, labeled with the variety and date, then use them for next year's crop. After harvesting your beans, plant your cabbages on the same field as beans leave a lot of nitrogen in the soil and that nitrogen will help you harvest healthy and big cabbages. Best farming tips is there to help you thrive in your garden or on your farm. If you have any farming questions or video requests, use the comment section below to let me know. Please like this video and share so that your friends may also benefit from this video lesson. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Goodbye.